Hi guys, my name is Shubhanga Rodia, Chemistry Master Teacher at Vedantu. Today we are going to talk about JE Advanced 2022 paper, that's paper 1, chemistry section and question number 4. Let's see what the question is all about. The question says, some amount of cupric nitrate is reacted with excess Ki and a brown solution forms along with a precipitate. Yes, we know what the reaction he is talking about. He is talking about CuNO3 twice ka reaction with Ki to give what? To give Cu2I2, right? And I2 is formed along with it, isn't it? Correct. Then he says, passing H2S through this brown solution gives another precipitate X. Quite frankly, the brown solution is of I3 minus, which contains one mole of I2. So I just mentioned I2 here. The next reaction he says H2S is passed through this brown solution and another precipitate is obtained that is obtained of sulfur. Good job. Then the question says find the amount of the sulfur precipitate. So we are given this mass, we are asked sulfur mass, so we have to go either by mole concept or equivalent concept. Because a lot of redox reactions are taking place, I'd prefer to go via equivalent concept. Now, to start equivalent concept, we have to understand n factor logics, isn't it? So, if we talk about here, oops, sorry. So, if we talk about this system, what is the n factor for copper 2 plus? The n factor for copper 2 plus would be 1 because copper 2 plus converts to copper plus 1. What is the n factor for I2 in the first reaction? Iodine is coming from minus 1 to 0 oxidation state. There are two iodine atoms, so n factor of iodine is 2. This was the first reaction car analysis. Now let's move ahead to the second one. What is the n factor for I2 in the second reaction? The n factor for I2 in the second reaction is also 2. Why? Because it goes from 0 to minus 1 and there are two iodine atoms involved. What is the n factor of sulfur that we are supposed to find? The n factor will again be 2. Why? Because this is in zero oxidation state, the parent sulfur was in minus 2. So, because the n factor of I2 is equal in both the reactions, we can skip n factor of I2 if we want as we progress. How are we going to solve? For the first reaction, we can say number of equivalences of reacting species and the products formed are equal. Therefore, equivalences of copper 2 plus should be equal to equivalences of I2. Right? Equivalence of copper 2 plus will be written as number of moles of copper 2 plus into n factor, that's 1 which will be equal to number of moles of I2 into the n factor, that's 2. From the second reaction, what do we get? From the second reaction, we get equivalence of I2 is equal to equivalence of sulfur. So number of moles of I2 into the n factor, that is 2, is equal to number of moles of sulfur into n factor, that's again 2. So please notice this thing and this thing are common. They are identical implies what implies number of moles of sulfur is equal to number of moles of copper 2 plus divided by 2 number of moles of copper 2 plus can be written as number of moles of cupric nitrate divided by 2 isn't it ho gaya na question solve we can now find number of moles of sulfur very easily what is the number of moles of cupric nitrate 3.74 and the molecular weight comes as 187 into half. These are the moles of sulfur. He is asking you the weight of sulfur, right? So weight of sulfur, you will simply multiply it with 32 into half into 32. This should give you your final answer. Thank you so much for joining guys. Take care. Bye-bye. And stay tuned for our next one.